Hallelujah. If you are believing God for a baby, receive yours in the name of Jesus. The miracles are coming in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. If you want number two or number three, they should come. They will come in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Are you blessed? Now shout a shout of victory. God is faithful. He is truly faithful. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are talking on the gift of faith. And we finished the gift of faith. And now we are now on the gifts of healing. Amen. Tell them about the gift. The gifts of healing. Amen. And I may not have time to finish it today but healing is not as long as faith because i'm not teaching on how to heal the sick that's different how to heal the sick is a teaching that can take even a whole year but i'm not teaching on that i'm just teaching on the gift of healing amen so i'm narrowing it to just the gift the gifts as the scripture calls it gifts of healings with an s praise the lord because of the mystery of this gift it is in plural so the gift of healing is a dynamic need of the church because our bodies most often are not expected to be sick because of the presence of the Holy Spirit yet we still get sick therefore the gifts of healing are a must generally the saints of God were to receive healing from the Lord amen because you are not like an unbeliever who doesn't have hope you have hope because of jesus you are to receive healing from him amen now raise your hands and let's pray holy spirit we love you we worship you we welcome you we honor you we glorify you thank you because these are your gifts unveil to us the mysteries of the living god and reveal to us to each one year lord what exactly Lord God of how this gives function so that we can flow in the last day with mighty manifestations of the spirit we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that gone are those days when the church struggles to heal the sick because father healing the sick is normal and will be normal to this church and to the church well you are coming to transform your people Holy Spirit we worship you we honor you unveil to us the mysteries of our great God in Jesus name amen. amen amen praise the Lord now the gifts of healing open the Bible with me to 1st Corinthians 12 9 but before we get there I just want to explain a few things the difference between healing and a miracle generally understanding the gifts of the Spirit sometimes can be a little bit confusive to people who just are what I call strict in definition because the gifts interlap it means the they look similar and they manifest similar so sometimes you may ask yourself is this a miracle or is this healing because the gifts fun the, somehow they, they function together amen so but generally what is healing healing is a gradual or Sometimes it can be instant healing something that is already there and need a touch of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? For example, somebody is sick of um, a disease. Call it disease. High blood pressure. Diabetes and the rest. You lay your hands or you pray for the person and the person gets healed. That disease leaves. Amen? A miracle most often is creative say with me creative it's creating something that was not there for example if somebody comes here without an eye there is no eye at all and you lay your hands and 
and command a new eye to be created. And the, and the eye is created. That's a miracle. You can't heal what is not there. Are you getting it? Yes. You only need a miracle. A man of God was praying and he shared his story. For some of you know Andrew Wamak. He shared a story how one day he prayed in, on the stage. He invited somebody who needed a miracle. The person needed a creative miracle. And the Lord had told him that that person will receive the miracle, will be healed. And the person came forward and they prayed and prayed. He lay hands there for maybe 20 times. Nothing happened. For they prayed for two hours, waiting for a miracle. Soon the Lord spoke to him clearly. And the Lord said, he does not need a, I mean healing, he needs a miracle. Move from healing to miracle, command the miracle to take place. So then he put his hand and then commanded a creative miracle and the place got completely grew back. Why? Because God does not bless ignorance. Sometimes you, are, you want to heal what doesn't exist. Are you getting the difference? You want to heal what doesn't exist. Amen? So they are creative miracles. If you don't have a womb, you don't need healing. You need a creative miracle. If your womb was removed, because there are many people whose womb was removed out of maybe fibroid or something, and they need a new womb, you need a creative miracle. God can put a new womb there. Easily. Amen? And let me tell you, that for the power of God, there is no difference whether it be headache or putting a new womb. God is too powerful. Nothing is impossible with him. It is you and I who see it as big. To God is nothing. Because God lives in miracles and operates in miracles. God lives in miracles and operates in miracles. Because the, the nature of God is miraculous. That which we call miracles to God is his normal life. Are you getting it? So God is altogether miraculous. We are the ones who expect that miracles. He doesn't expect it because to him it's normal. Are you getting it? Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says God cannot lie. When he says this is red, it becomes red. He just says it. He calls the things that be not as though they were and they come to pass just as he said. So when God speaks, it becomes what he says. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why he is a miracle. He does not just do miracles. He is a miracle God. Amen. Amen. So understanding the nature of God and the call of God for each one of us will change you. God is not there waiting for you to cry and sit and beg for miracles. As long as you know him, you have miracles within you. Because he is altogether miraculous. It does not need extra power for God to do it. Why? Because he is altogether miraculous. It is his natural. Do you struggle to breathe? Except you have issues. <laughs> Are you getting me? If somebody has issue with breathing, what, what do we do? We take immediately the person to the hospital. Isn't it? Why? Because there's something. You don't even realize it. Some of, if I didn't say it now, you don't even notice it. You just breathe naturally. <laughs> are you getting it? So therefore, miracles to God are like that. They are so natural to him. Amen? He doesn't need to struggle for it. It just flows. Amen? The God you are dealing with is a miracle God. Christianity it's a miracle movement. Amen. Amen? Therefore, it is unusual for a miracle God to create a church without miracles. The contradiction, sister, you got it. You are in the spirit. The contradiction must be destroyed by the church. Because it is not God refusing to do the miracles because he can refuse to do miracles. The reason is because of the fact that miracles of all kinds for you were purchased by the cross of Jesus. Once Jesus died on the cross, a season for miracles started. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
that's why he was telling the disciples the things that i do you will do also greater things than this shall i shall you do because of what i go to the father because when he goes to the father the season for extraordinary miracles started that's why if you notice the disciples struggle with miracles when he was there they will go to pray for someone and they had issues and the lord jesus will rebuke them sometime will tell them oh of little faith you remember how this lady came and was begging that the disciple pray for the for the son you remember and the disciples could not jesus spoke but after that when jesus left miracles became normal to the disciples you know why the son of god was already glorified hallelujah i announce to you the son of god is glorified miracles are normal should be normal to the church hallelujah i pray your faith is dead and i pray that you understand that these things are for you and they are not something you 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 struggle with it should be a way of life for you hallelujah hallelujah say to me miracles healing will be a way of life for me in jesus name amen praise the lord hallelujah we'll be believing god for miracles we are having a miracle event in buoy beginning thursday thursday friday saturday amen those three days of miracle thursday friday and saturday i'm inviting the whole church so friday we won't have a friday prayer meeting here all of us are going there amen on sunday we'll have a normal sunday service here on sunday this coming week so this friday please and then we shall also connect our our church to to view so for all our church online around the world they will instead of watching here for they will we'll connect it to our youtube channel amen so that they can watch it praise the lord we are trusting god thursday friday and saturday there will be miracles miracles i'm believing god for miracles i'm believing god for deliverance for healing amen our god is a healer our god is a healer hallelujah to god be the glory so that's the program it's a revival if um, um revival and miracle conference when heavens invade earth praise the lord so we will go there and believe god for something supernatural because he is altogether supernatural amen say with me god is supernatural shout it god is supernatural amen amen hallelujah glory be to god now the gift of healing the gift of faith and the gift of miracles or working of miracles are under which category of gifts the power gifts amen power gifts they do something say with me they do something power gifts they do something miracles healing and faith are under the power gifts they do something shout it they do amen then the gift of interpretation of tongues gift of tongues and prophecy they are under which gifts vocal they are under vocal gift we are now practicing because soon after all the teachings on the gifts of the spirit we will stand here and we shall flow in those gifts whether you like it or not you have to flow in them i'm sorry if you don't flow, we'll beat, you, beat, beat it out of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I'll flow in these gifts. Whether the devil likes it or not. In Jesus' name. Let me tell you, nothing testify of God as the gifts of the Spirit. Nothing reveal God. And God wants to reveal himself to America. God wants to reveal himself to the nations and nothing reveal God as the gifts of the spirit. Words alone are not enough. Men need to see the power of God. Amen. They need to see the gifts functioning. Nothing pulls. Even an atheist and somebody who doesn't believe in God, when he's in a place of miracles, he will stretch his head to see a miracle. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? So, God will not bless ignorance. So, the gift of, I mean, the vocal gifts are the gifts that say something. Say with me, say something. Say, say something. Amen? Then we have the other gifts of the gift of uh, uh, descending of spirit, the word of knowledge, and the word of wisdom. Those three gifts are what? Revelation gifts. They do what? They reveal something. Thank you. Amen? They are revelational gifts because they reveal something. The gift of descending of spirit reveals something. They reveal, uh, you see in the realms of the spirit. My wife manifests a lot in that gift. The other day I was praying that mine will increase because sometimes it happens just once a while that I will see. Most often, the gift of prophecy that manifests in me sometimes may be linked with that gift because sometimes I see, I see stuff. Not all the time, but sometimes I'll see stuff and I'll say what I'm seeing. So you see in the realm of the spirit, the word of knowledge reveals something. From nowhere, God gives you a certain, a word of his knowledge. Amen? God knows everything. He just gives you a word of it. Uh, the same with the word of wisdom. God has all wisdom. He gives you a word of wisdom. Are you getting it? Then, the gift of descending of spirit, descend three things. Number one, whether something is flowing in the spirit of God. Two, whether it is the manifestation of what? The spirit of the devil or the human spirit. Do you understand? Amen. They, they reveal things. They reveal the spirit. It doesn't, the gifts of descending of spirit doesn't descend people. It descends spirit. It's called descending of spirit. Amen? It's not a gift of, of judging people. I have discernment. As some people use this. I have discernment. I just know that that sister is wicked. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't have discernment. You need love. You need love. <laughs> Amen. The capacity to love the unlovable. That gives discernment spirit, not your attitude towards people. Amen. Amen. So, the gifts of the spirit are important. Now, let's come to the gift of power and concerning healing. The gifts of power, they do something. And let me tell you, the gifts of power was given to the church for the propagation of the gospel. I repeat, the gifts of power was given to the church for what? The propagation of the gospel. So that the gospel be preached. Nothing authenticate the gospel as the gifts of, uh, as the gifts of power. That's why the Lord Jesus in the last statement when he says, And this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. Because he had told them first of all to do what? Go and preach the gospel. What did he say? Go and preach the gospel to every creature. The moment he said go preach the gospel, he, he revealed how the gospel is to be preached. Are you getting me? Maybe this side can get it better. Because... I see my friend looking at me like that. I think you want to get in more. <laughs> I'm saying the gifts of power reveal the God. I mean, was the gospel was to be preached with the manifestation of the gifts of power. It is indispensable for the preaching of the gospel. Let me give you a clear example. And I said, the Bible says, the Lord Jesus said, go ye into all the world and Preach the gospel to every creature. When he said that, he immediately said, This sign shall follow them that believe. He was saying, The preaching of the gospel must be followed with signs. And if you name the signs that were, were put there, you will see miracles and healing are the two main signs. Touching, raising the dead, that's a miracle. Amen. Casting out demons, that's a miracle. Are you getting it? Miracles. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Healing. Are you getting it? So therefore, you are seeing that miracles, healing, were given to the church for the propagation of the gospel. Amen. Let me illustrate it this way. One 
I may give a prophetic word. For example, I gave a prophetic word to the to a precious uh, pastor from Cameroon, the youth pastor with the church in Yaoundé. He was here a few minutes ago, isn't it? I minister to them prophetically. Sometime in ministering prophetically, the Lord gives you a word and you obey him first and then the other one comes. You All of the gifts of the spirit function by faith. The Bible said, the Bible says, you minister according to the measure of faith you have received. That's why some people are limited in the manifestation of the gift because they have not built their faith in the world. The more you build your faith, the more you can flow. The, the, the channel is not the Holy Spirit because he is willing to flow. The channel is the man. So when the channel cannot be, uh, it's like water flowing through a pipe. If it's blocked, it limits the water. You are, you are getting it. But if the pipe is open, the more the water will flow. So the channel is undiluted flow of the power of the great God, the spirit of God. So he flows unhindered. He does not give the spirit by measurement. He doesn't measure his move. It's man that put measurement there. Based on your choices of life. If you choose not to study the word, you limit the way God can use you. If you choose not to pray and spend time with God, you limit the way God can use you. Those things are important in preparing you for God to use you. Declare the channel for God to use. Amen? Amen? Are you getting it? So, if we talk of the gifts of the Spirit, in the propagation of the gospel, one of the first things about the gifts of the Spirit is simply understanding that when I call somebody to give a word, the first thing is, number one, for example, when I knelt here, the Lord started showing me things about them. I don't know why God chose to show me something about them today. <laughs> because maybe they are living on Tuesday. The Lord said, I need to speak to this one before they go. All these wiles, I've not given them a word. But the Lord showed me. Now, and I just saw him ministering in the field. And the grace of God was upon him. That's all I saw. And God was using him in that field. And the field, green field, represents the ministry and the call of God and the people. The influence on the people. So I understood that fact. So when I called them, that's all I had. But the moment I began ministering, the Lord revealed the rest. Amen? The Lord revealed the rest to him and to her. You get what I'm saying? Now, I don't know what is going through her mind. God knows. God knows what is going through her mind. God knows the thing about her children and stuff. I, had, I, I don't know any of those things. But God knows it. And God spoke to her. I've not even asked her what was God saying because some of the things I said surprised me. It surprised me. I'm planning to ask, what did you do? <laughs> when we go home, she has many, she has a lot of answers to give me. <laughs> And a prophetic word most often may not go by you what you understand. Say it out of faith. Don't be afraid of what if I'm wrong. You get what I'm saying? Say it out of faith. If you, you are wrong, you can be corrected. Because if you, are, if you are not willing to hear God's voice and you're not willing to take risks, you cannot flow in the spirit. Amen? I was saying things to her that I never received while I was kneeling here. It just flowed. And God was speaking to her. Amen. God was speaking to her. Now, let me bring about something. In a place where the gifts are manifesting, especially the gift, let's say, other gifts, vocal revelation, people may doubt it. And they may say, it's because he knows Bena very well. That's why. He, you get what I'm saying? You may say, oh, it's because he knows. Somebody has told you. If, if somebody comes here who have never been here and is speaking, somebody online may say that, oh, the pastor told him about that brother. You are getting it. It can be doubted easily. But when you see a new eye formed, some of you are getting it. When you see there is no eye socket, but a new eye is formed, they it, it, it authenticate the power of God. 
it reveals the fact that God is at work. Even the enemies of the gospel cannot deny it. You remember what happened when Jesus, when uh, the disciples healed the lame man at the gate called Beautiful. The Bible says what? They called the people, the Sanhedrin, who hated Jesus and hated the disciples. The Bible says a notable miracle was done and we cannot deny it. If it was just a prophetic word, they could put it aside. If it was just a word of knowledge, they could put it aside. But when it comes to miracles, it's evident. It reveals and it, 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 your, your physical eyes see it. So you cannot refuse. That's why God made sure miracles and healing were to be what backs the preaching of the gospel. So that it can convince men that this is real. So if you preach the gospel, you must ask God to back it with signs and wonders. I repeat, if you preach the gospel, you must with signs and wonders. Because it is normal for the gospel to be preached with power. It was never to be demonstrated with words. It was to be demonstrated with signs following. Signs point to something. You look at it and you see a sign. When there's a sign there, ten, ten, ten right or this church street is giving you identification. Something is here. The signs of miracles point to Jesus. They say the lion of the tribe of Judah is here. The spirit of God is here. And it makes people who are doubting the presence of God turn and say, wow, God must be here. Hallelujah. So it is abnormal to preach the gospel. The church has failed to think that we can preach the gospel without signs and wonders. Words alone is not enough. It must be backed. If you give tracts, you minister to people, pray for the sick where you go. Because the gospel must be backed with signs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor the gospel must be backed with signs. In Jesus name. Amen. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Let's read aloud. 1, 2, 3, go. To another faith by the same spirit. To another gifts of healing by the same spirit. You see gifts in plural. Say with me, plural. Gifts with an S. Amen. And then you see healing. Plural. Because the first part is this. The gifts are in plural because is it manifests differently. You may have a gift of healing, but it manifests different from another person. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who heal particular disease almost 100%. You, you have heard of this lady. What's her name? Uh, Heidi Becker. In Mozambique, almost every blind person sees when she prays. But she doesn't have the same result with other stuff. Are you getting it? She has a particular grace to heal the blind. You understand? So we are saying another person may have a particular grace to heal cancer. So it is gifts with plural giving you the ability to understand that they manifest in different ways. And the Holy Spirit's mind is sovereign. You don't have to ask questions. He chooses to manifest that way. I don't know why he chose to give particular grace to some people to heal a particular thing. If you are, you are here, you have the gifts of healing. You will discover that there is one area where you get very fast result. Why the other areas you are praying for grace to, to manifest more there? You, you understand? So it is gifts. It is many. It is manifested in many ways. It is not a gift. It's gifts. Amen? Sometimes there are people who, cannot, who don't heal as much physically, but they have very strong ability to heal, to give inner healing. When they speak to people, the people get healed in, inwardly. Amen? They provide, they are better than what we call psychological counselors and uh, psychiatrists. Such people have gifts to bring inner healing wherever they go. You talk to somebody, he gets angry. But when they come and talk, the person calms down. 
Amen? If you don't have that gift, don't try it. There are some people that, even when they are talking nice, you feel you, people are getting angry. But another person, when he comes and talks, ooh, like breath of fresh air. That brother has just healed me. Amen? Are you getting what I'm saying? They have the gift to bring inner healing. Hallelujah. Because healing includes spirit, soul, and body. I repeat, healing includes spirit, soul, and body. That's why it's gifts. It's not just a gift. The spirit, there are people who are good at healing the spirit and the soul. The others are good with the body. There are people who can heal the sick year. Cancer will disappear, but the moment they start talking, they make people angry. Simit Wilgos Wilgo was one of them. People who get angry in his meeting, cursing him. Yet, he will answer them back and go and raise the dead and heal the sick. You may say, where, where, where was the cross? How come he did not manifest the cross and he suffered like Jesus? He was spoken and he never returned. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? Uh, uh, but he was not called for inner healing. He was called for physical healing. And he concentrated. He will box a, a cancer out of people. The rascals behind will be grumbling. One of them shouted, leave him alone. You are hurting him. And you know what he said? He said, you mind your business and I mind mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of us will just pray in the spirit. Father, help me, Lord. I refuse to be distracted. If I speak, they may think that I have the flesh. But he did not care. <laughs> he will answer back and box the cancer out. Continue boxing until the cancer came out. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who wrote his biography say he was known to be, he doesn't spare. A man of God, Lester Sumrall, entered his house with a newspaper. I don't want to use my this thing to be a newspaper. I need, okay, I can use a mail book. Okay. He entered with a newspaper. He has just passed at his hotel place, picked up a newspaper, and he was coming. Enter. As he was entering, Simi Wugos said, throw that thing out there. He said, he said the, news, the news media represents Satan. They speak for the devil. And they teach unbelief. I don't even want it in my home. He was known never to read newspaper nor even listen to the news. You may criticize him that he was not informed. He raised 21 people from the dead. How much? How many have you raised? He had something where he knew that those things are full of unbelief. The news media, very satanic. Extremely satanic. And do you know one thing about the news media? They are not just backed by the devil. But they are the opinions of the owner of the news channel. Look at the, if the one MSNBC is owned by Bill Gates, isn't it? And Bill Gates, character-wise, is a horror Libra. So therefore what? He's, he is giving you his viewpoint of life. It's not news, it's propaganda. News, most of it, even take whether it is uh, take whether it is Fox News or uh, what I call a, a little conservative because they are also on the other side. A little conservative. It's based on the opinion of the owner. They don't go beyond the opinion of the owner of the news. So the one who owns the news determines the type of news you hear. They are giving you their viewpoint of their life. If they are Satanists, they give you Satan, like the toner, a non Satanist, on in CNN, and reveal Satanic news to you. So, therefore, it is a revelation of who they are. Because the news media in America is non neutral, it's owned by special interest. 
and it's owned by corporate media. And this corporate media is ruled by certain billionaires. Their viewpoint is what they feed you with. Are you getting it? And therefore, if you spend their time listening to it, they will control the way you think, control the way you act. So therefore, they are controlling the world through lies and propaganda. It's a total deception put as news. Because the news is bought and owned. Are you getting it? This was not part of the message. But I like it. I like it myself. No, you are in the spirit, sister. I need a hand clap. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So I'm saying, children of God, this man of God could not stand anything that was news media. This is Similugo's word. He was known to be raw. But God used him to heal the sick in, a, in an extraordinary way. Extraordinary. If you want him to cancel you for your marriage, forget it. You will divorce. Are you getting what I'm saying? That was not his call. He was not called giving inner healing to help you cancel you and your problem with your husband. No. It will not. You go there, you will leave from there planning your divorce. <laughs> Why? The gifts of healing manifest in different ways. Because even marriage needs the gifts of healing manifesting. Some marriage needs to be healed. But you go to the people who have that gift. Not to anybody. Else you live from there with a quarrel. <laughs> Amen? I once seen a couple being cancelled. Ah, this brother. You want them divorced? He was rebuking, rebuking. They have come for healing, not for a rebuke. Just heal them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the gifts are different. Say with me, the gifts are different. Amen. And when the gifts of healing is manifesting, it manifests with the various capacities God has put inside of you. Some of you here have the gift of inner healing. You can bring peace where there is no peace. And yet you don't function there. The reason why you don't function there is because you don't know you have a gift to heal people. You always want the physical, expect the physical healing, which is what we call spectacular. Yet the inner healing, you have it, and people are dying and craving for your help, and you don't give it because you have been praying that help me to touch to be healed. When you have the gift of healing, and God has given you ability to heal in inner, to heal people in their inward being. Yet you constantly say you don't have the gift of healing, prophesying doom to your gifts. But understand the gifts manifest in different ways. Amen? Because God wants to heal the whole body. So with me, the whole body. Shout to the whole body. Say spirit, soul, and body. Amen? Many of you here will know you have this, you have a gift somehow. Amen? Do you bring peace in situation? Or you are the chief rebuker? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You may have but physical healing, healing the sick. Leave the one of trying to heal people alone. You will cause more damage. I mean, to heal in inward. Amen. Know your gift, flow in your gift, and you'll be a blessing to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Say with me, gifts. Gifts of healing. Are you in? Say, say gifts with S. Gifts, say gifts. Say healings. Amen. We have explained healings with S. It represents the different types of healings. Amen. And then the gifts represent the various gifts of healing. 
The different type of healing is example. I gave you the example of this lady who healed a lot of blind eyes. Amen. And there are people who cancer is, they heal cancer. I know of a man of God, head of him, where almost everyone he prays for who had cancer got healed. Brand new teeth. So people have different gifting of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Say with me, God is good. Shout it, God is good. Shake your neighbor, touch your neighbor, say God is a good God. What I'm sharing today is so important to the church of the Most High God. I want you to understand this because many of you here are sitting here with buried gifts and talents. Many will die and go to heaven and realize how much they have wasted their lives. This is not their portion in Jesus' name. Don't wait until you get to hell, heaven to manifest the gifts. They are not needed there. They are needed on earth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will not heal people in heaven. They are already healed. The healing manifests on earth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say with me, I will not bury my gifts. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Shout it, I will not bury my gift. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Now the gift of faith is the supernatural, unusual ability to heal the sick more than normal. What is the gift of faith? The supernatural, abnormal ability to heal the sick. Amen? To heal the sick more than normal. It means everybody can heal the sick. But the one who has the gift excel in that area. He has more results. Say with me, I can heal the sick. Say, I will heal the sick. Amen? So you have no excuse not to heal the sick. Because the signs follow those who believe. Therefore, but the gift is a manifestation of the spirit in individuals to heal beyond the normal. Amen? These ones have the ability to heal more people than usual. Do you get it? You get it? Okay. Praise the Lord. Say with me, the gifts of healing are required in the body of Christ. Amen? And as we explained, they are different in manifestations and they are different from miracles. Miracles are most often instant, I mean instantaneous and most often creative. Say with me, creative. Creating new things. Amen. But healing heal what is there. You get it? It heals what is already there. For example, take somebody like needs healing. You just feel pain. You don't know what it is. Whether it is arthritis. The pain is just there. You are struggling. You need what? Healing. Amen? You need healing. And now, healing can manifest through deliverance. Deliverance is a miracle. If you study scripture, deliverance is considered a miracle. It's what? A miracle. It's not healing. But most often, when there is that miracle manifesting, the people also get healed. You get what I'm saying? You may cast out a demon of cancer. When the demons leave, the person gets healed. So they work together. Healing and miracle always flow together. Amen? And most of the gifts of the spirit, people of God, manifest together. For example, if you have the gift of healing, pray for the gift of the word of knowledge. Because the gift of the word of knowledge reveals to you the person who is being healed of a particular disease. You get what I'm saying? You are ministering here and the Lord reveals to you, if you are handicapped on the gifts of the word of knowledge, you will just be praying amiss. But if you have the word of knowledge, you will know who is God healing right now. Amen? 
God is healing this sister or this brother. You will get to know exactly who does God wants you to touch. People are looking at me like, like Bishop, what are you saying? <laughs> you are getting it. If you are getting it, say, I'm getting it. Say, I'm getting it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Say with me the gifts of healing. Shout it the gifts of healing. Amen. It is most often being you are led of the spirit. Say, I am led of the spirit. Let's look at a, a clear example. John chapter 5, verse 1 to 9. How the Lord was led to heal one person. John 5, verse 1 to 9. Let's read aloud. One, one to three, go. Let's read. One to three, go. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Verse 2. Now, there is in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. Continue. In this lay a great multitude. Let's underline that word. Great? Great? Of who? Of sick people. Blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Now, this reveals something which I'll share a little bit as towards the end of the message. It reveals what they call an environment of healing. A place where healing takes place. You have to be there for that healing to manifest. You understand? Healing by environment. There are, there are times which during worship here you can just receive your healing. Yeah. By that environment created. And it cannot be repeated. You don't say I'll do it next Sunday. You get what I'm saying? The environment. Now, this environment was what? An angel coming to do what? Stay. That was the right time for anyone to enter. You get it? Amen? In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Verse 4. Let's go to verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool. Let's read together. And stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Any disease. As long as you enter first, you are healed. Are you getting it? Okay, verse 5. Now, a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. This one was there for 38 years. Because the incident happened once a year. He was there for how long? Verse 6. Let's go. One, two, three, go. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he, he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Yeah. What was the question? Were there multitude there? Yeah. Were there multitude there? Yeah. Why did Jesus not ask everybody? <laughs> Some of you are getting it. Jesus did not ask, do you think this man is the only one who has been there for long? No. There were others who have been there for long. Amen? But this man was the only one Jesus asked, do you want to be made well? Now, you see his answer. He did not answer Jesus. And that's how many of us do. That's how we pray. When we pray, we receive answer. We want it to come our way. Now, in verse 7, what does the Bible say? Let's read what the man said. One, two, three, go. The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Is that the question Jesus asks? <laughs> Some of us like to talk. <laughs> we love talk. You must explain yourself. Did Jesus want any explanation? What did Jesus say? Do you want to be well? The answer was, yes. He is explaining that my case is difficult. <laughs> this case, I have tried for years. When I stand and sit here, I cannot go into the water because others will go ahead of me. 
To him, only that particular way was the way to be healed. And he was explaining the spirit of victimhood. I'm a victim of my circumstance. I just can't be healed. Others always take my healing position. Before I jump, they, took, they take it from me. The spirit of victimhood is frightful. Choose not to be a victim. You are a child of God. Shout it, I'm a child of God. Say, I'm not a victim. In Jesus' name. Amen. Learn to answer a question that is asked of you by the Lord. Don't explain to the Lord how things are tough. When you hear God's voice, do you want my touch? Don't say, Lord, <laughs> I've been praying all this while. I have fasted. I have even gone to places. Nothing happened. No. God doesn't want to hear that. Just say, yes, Lord, touch me. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of us practice what this man is saying without us knowing. Then, verse 8. What did the Lord do? Let's read verse 8. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. The Lord ignored all what the man was saying. Do you know how much God loves us? And ignore many of our things. You know, I read a man of God's book. And it makes me to tremble. That's the reason why I move into praying in tongues more than I pray in words. And a great man of God that you people respect. You know what this man said? The Lord, one day in a vision, told him, he said, My son, if I answer all your prayer, you'll be finished. He said, many times you pray in English wrongly. And he told the Lord, Lord, I use your word. Because he used to use God's word. To pray. He said, yes, you use it according to your understanding of that word. So, sometimes God shows us mercy not to answer some of our things. Then, he said, the Lord told him, if, but if you pray in the Holy Spirit, you can't pray wrong. You can't pray wrong. So you have to pray more in tongues and less in words. So that you, let, you reduce your problems. Instead of praying for Sister Docas, Lord, convict Sister Docas of what she does. God, the Holy Spirit may not be asking for conviction. The Holy Spirit may be asking for something else. The Holy Spirit may be saying, pray that God will bless her with wealth. But you are instead of praying that convict him her of worldliness. <laughs> Why? Your understanding may be wrong. Are you getting me? But when the Holy Spirit is praying through you, he cannot be wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why when you pray in tongues, you are praying the mind of God. And the Holy Spirit is praying through you. And when the Holy Spirit prays, God must answer or there will be a contradiction in the Godhead. When the Spirit prays, God must answer. I hope you get it. You are praying according to the will of God. And the more you pray in tongues, if I want to pray for you, let's say I pray for my wife. If I pray in tongues for some time, I get direction on how to pray for her. And sometimes I have prayed like that and realized that what I wanted to pray for her was wrong. The Holy, the Holy Spirit immediately tells me, pray this way. I'm just teaching you the secret to answer prayer. Pray a Lord in the Holy Spirit. He will direct you how to pray in words. Amen. Amen. A man of God came here once. He shared a story how he said he will go before the Lord and he will pray in tongues for one hour. After that, God started revealing to him the things to pray for people. Sometime the Lord will show him, pray for this person, pray for this, pray for this, pray, pray for this. Now he will pray in words for about 15 minutes. He said, because the more you pray in tongues, you link yourself to the Holy Spirit who knows everybody. And then you pray correctly for the people. Amen? Amen? Tell your neighbor I love you. I'll pray for you. 
don't lie amen <laughs> when you pray in tongues you pray for the person say with me i love jesus shout it i love jesus i receive from him the grace to pray correctly in jesus name amen and then in verse 9 the, the bible says well let's, let's read verse 9 one two three go and immediately the man was made well took up his bed and walk and that day was the sabbath wow jesus always had problems with these people and their sabbath if you read the bible it is as though jesus waits for the sabbath to heal people <laughs> whenever he heals on the sabbath he has trouble the people immediately start attacking him to take your bed and walk the god of the sabbath is lord of the sabbath hallelujah glory be to god he said take your bed and walk praise the lord the man took his bed and trouble began trouble began and these people began to attack jesus because let's read what happened in in um in john 16 to 19 john 6 that, that's verse 5 verse 5 i mean chapter 5 verse verse 16 to 19 the same chapter please sorry the same chapter chapter verse okay let's one two three go for this reason the jews persecuted jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the sabbath hey the power of religion religion does not care if god is moving who healed this person god they want to believe they know better than god and that's how religion works religion will defend their ideals above the power of god they don't care if god is moving they care whether their methods have been affected are you getting it so that's the horror of religion because if god choose to heal somebody on a sabbath god is sovereign because the sabbath is his sabbath not yours he chose to heal somebody on the sabbath day then they revolt and they were angry that the person is healed on the sabbath it's god who heals amen therefore he heals and moves the way he wants not the way human beings want hallelujah hallelujah religion is more cruel than unbelief i repeat religion is more cruel than unbelief men don't care if you do what is right if they are full of religion their religion must their religious regulations must be adhered to if not everything you are doing is not of god that's why I love what Bill Johnson said. Bill Johnson said, God doesn't care contradicting your understanding of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were angry. Verse 17. Let's read verse 17. Aloud. But Jesus answered them, My father has been walking until now, and I have been walking. He was telling them, My father is walking, and I have been walking. Amen. Amen. Oh, there's so much in this verse, but I don't have time to go into it because I don't want to preach something else. But I'm getting revelation from this verse. Hallelujah. It's sweet. The scripture is sweet. Now, in verse 18, let's read verse 18. One, two, three, go. Therefore, the Jews, let's read everybody aloud, please. Say it with your whole being. Don't say, therefore. Say it with strength. One, two, three, go. Therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. The Jews recognized that when you say you are the son of God, you have made yourself equal to God because God is one. Yes. Because in the old covenant, the scripture says what? Jehovah Elohim is one Lord. 
They know the old covenant, they know the old testament. They knew that the old testament said Jehovah Elohim is who? One Lord. So you cannot separate the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So if the Son says He is the Son of God, He must be God. Amen. Therefore, they were angry because once they knew the scripture enough to know that when he said, I'm the son of God, he is God. Jesus is not just God's son. He is God. The Jews recognize it. Amen. Say with me, the Jews recognize it. I recognize it also. Jesus is God. Shout it. Jesus is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You remember Paul explained, though equal with God, did not count it or make himself, but humbled himself even to the level of death. He's equal with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because God cannot be divided. God is one Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, these things are sweet. They are just wonderful. In verse 19, Jesus answered what I want to share with you. Let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. Jesus was explaining something powerful. He was saying, it is the father that you people are claiming about his Sabbath. Who healed this man? I don't know if you got it. Yes. Michelle. Michelle, really, I'm talking to you. Do you get this? Because I want you to get this. Because the Lord will use you to heal the sick. Yes. Amen. And I want you to hear this. It's serious. God is saying, that who healed the sick? God the father. He said, I do what I see the father do. Amen? What the father is doing, that's what I do. The father went to this place. There were multitudes. I told you to underline the word multitude. Say with me. Great, great multitude of people with different diseases. Yet, the father went and Jesus did what? Touch one, heal the person, and move back. You know what was happening? Jesus manifested all the gifts. The gifts of healing was manifesting. There's a difference when the gift is manifesting, and there's a difference when faith for healing is manifesting. Faith for healing, the Bible says what? Whosoever touched him was healed. Are you getting it? Whosoever touched him. It was the environment of healing at that time. Just touch and be healed. But when the gift is functioning, you must know who to pray for. If the gift is functioning, you pray and there's a long line. When there is a long line for healing... This time is not to manifest the gift. This time is healing by faith. If you want to manifest the gift, the first person you pray for may not be healed and it kills the faith of everybody. If the first person who comes there does not receive healing, others say, oh, that's my case also. But if the first person gets healed, an environment is created. Everybody who moves there now, their faith explodes. I know that I know that I know that I will be healed. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, therefore, the gifts of healing can create an environment. When the gifts of healing is in functioning, you can call somebody from the crowd. Sometimes you call the person's name. When the person comes out, the person gets healed. Faith is created in that place. Then an atmosphere or environment is created. That's why the gifts of healing is the initiate what you call the, the door opener or the key. Once it starts manifesting, a lot of people get healed. But for it to manifest, you must do what Jesus said. You must know what the Father is doing. You must get the direction. 
You must know. You must know. Don't just say, everybody come here. No. Get somebody God is healing right now. Amen. Tell your neighbor, get somebody God is healing. Shout it, get somebody God is healing. Amen. Shout to get somebody. Let's, t- let, let's take the case of Paul. Paul was ministering somewhere in Acts 14. Acts 14 verse 7 to 11. Hallelujah. I'm enjoying these things. Are you enjoying it? If you're not enjoying this, you need prayers. Because this is your portion. I decree you will flow in these things. You will live in such a life. In the name of Jesus. Let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. And they were preaching the gospel there. Paul, this is about Paul. Amen. Paul was the one preaching. And let's continue. One, two, three, go. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. And what happened? Verse 9. Let's read aloud. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Many were listening. But Paul saw one man and picked him out. Are you getting it? Many were listening. It was like a crusade. Preaching there. Paul saw one person. He said, that one. That's how you can attract the power of God. You can pull from a minister. You can pull the healing when the ministry is still going on and the person who says, and let me tell you, you can pull even a prophetic word. Many people have given them prophetic word. They'll tell me, they literally pray that I should call them. And sometimes my hand was not, I remember I was ministering here once, I wanted to stop and the Lord spoke to me. You must call somebody. That was the wife of a brother in Canada, um, Noel. Noel uh, Tigbo, the wife of uh, Cedric. I was ministering here. She herself, she prayed that God will cause me to give her a word. I was not even thinking of them. I was not even, they, they thought of me. I loved them, but that time I was not thinking about them. But the moment I wanted to close, the Lord spoke to me. Noel. Noel Tigbo. And I said, Noel, thus says the Lord. She told me herself that she cried out to God. She literally pulled it out. Amen? Paul saw this man. See, the man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently, seeing that he had what? Faith to be healed. It's the same thing. Seeing that somebody had faith to receive the word. Hallelujah. Say with me, I can pull. The gifts of God. Amen. Say, by my faith, I can pull the gifts of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Paul healed this one person right there. Gifts of faith most often is directed by the Holy Spirit. You you go to a place, manifest the gifts, it manifests that way. Say with me, the gifts of faith is manifested by the Holy Spirit. Say, by the Holy Spirit. Shout it, by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So there are three ways that healing takes place. Number one is through the gifts. Say with me, the gifts of healing. Amen? Number two, by the prayer of faith. Say with me, prayer of faith. This one is available to everybody. You can heal the sick. You will 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 heal the sick. So by faith, if you can build your faith, you can be healing the sick without the gift. Amen? Let me share a story that really blessed me when I read one of Ken Hagen's book. He was ministering somewhere and the gifts were manifesting. People were being, almost everybody he prayed for God healed. The gifts were functioning. Soon, he noticed that the anointing is lifted. He wanted to stop. The Lord told him, no, move from the anointing to faith. God was teaching him that even when you don't feel my presence, I still love the people enough to heal them. 
Barakadoroba Shanda. He said he moved from just the anointing, he now began healing the people by faith. And hundreds of them got healed. Amen. Say with me, healing by faith. Everyone here can manifest it. Everyone here can manifest it. You will manifest it. Hallelujah. So when you study the word on healing, you can be healing the sick any day. You go to the hospital and heal the sick. Hallelujah. By faith. Amen. Say with me, I will heal the sick. By faith. And Kenneth Hagen explained something. He said, don't give the excuse that you don't have the gift. You can heal people by faith. Because that command has been given that you should do what? Heal the sick. The Bible does not say when you have the gift, heal the sick. The Bible says what? Heal the sick. Say with me, heal the sick. Say with me, heal the sick. Amen? It's a command of scripture so you can heal by faith. The third way to heal the sick is by the presence of God or the environment of where God is moving. Amen? Say with me the presence. In most of Benny Hinn's ministry, he has the gift of healing. But most of his ministry, he is so good in hosting God's presence. I attended one of Benny Hinn's meetings. You know what I discovered? For of, uh, one of his crusades. For over two hours, the meeting started. Worship went for two hours before he even came. Worship went for two hours before Pastor Benny entered. When he entered, he worshipped again for another one to two hours. Then he started praying for the sick. So if you notice, for four hours, God was worshipped. An environment was created where people, I saw the, uh, uh, people walking out of their wheelchair. The environment of healing was created for healing to walk. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So therefore, you can heal by the environment. Creating an environment where it is impossible not to be healed. Tell your neighbor, create that environment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why if you have problem with worship, you have problem with God's environment. And he said something I will never forget. He said, when it comes to miracles, and let me tell you, when it comes to miracles, you don't give God time. He said, for a miracle service, you don't tell God, heal now in one hour or I go. You will go. Like you came. He said, healing by environment, you wait for God to do it. He worship until the atmosphere shift. Amen. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Do you know when Peter was, Peter's shadow was healing the sick, it was what? Healing by environment. You think it was healing by faith? Was it by faith? It was the environment. It was not Peter. It is who overshadowed Peter. The glory of God was on Peter and whenever you come across him in that environment, you get healed. It was not the faith. It was environment. Amen? Say with me, healing by the environment of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Where he is, he is a healing Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you want more healing, create the environment. I don't know if my wife re remembers this. There was a time they were praying and worshiping God with a group of sisters, those early days. And a sister has had a problem with, uh, um, is it? No, the, sp the spleen or something. So something uh, that they had to remove, but we refused to remove it. God bladder. The God bladder had to be removed. We refused it. They vowed that God will heal the person. And she was in pain. And they came together and they decided to pray and worship God. On the fourth hour, what if they left the third hour? On the fourth hour of that worship, the healing manifested. 
She went back to the doctor. They could not understand. Is it the same God blood that we check when you were in the hospital here? He had stones in it. All the stones have disappeared. And the Lord showed my wife. An angel entered the room as they were praying. And moved the old God blood that put a new one. The challenge of the presence of God was so strong that God could not ignore it. So with me, healing by God's environment is required in the last day. That's why you cannot ignore the environment of the church. There are things that can happen there which cannot happen when you are alone. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it is so crucial that you understand that there are miracles that happen only in an environment. Praise the Lord. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we cannot talk about the gift of healing without saying something about the methods. Say with me, method of healing. The methods depend on the Holy Spirit. The methods no, say it aloud. Say the methods depend on the Holy Spirit. Shout it, depend on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There are cases in scripture where the Bible reveals some methods. I'll say it as we close. Some methods. Say with me, some methods. One of the methods is what? They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But that is not the only... That, I mean, that's not the only method mentioned in scripture. The Bible says, if somebody, another method is what? If you are sick, call for the elders of the church to pray for you, anointing you with what? Oil. This method, because oil represents who? The Holy Spirit. It shows that it's a method to heal the sick. And if he has committed any sin, what will happen? He will be forgiven. So, it's a different method. There are methods that are stated in scripture which are normal. You can use as often as possible. But don't limit yourself to a method. Because the Holy Spirit goes by the way he wants. Amen? There are methods which Jesus used to heal the sick which has, I don't know if anybody has ever used it. He spit in somebody's tongue. No, for eyes, he made uh, mud. And if you want to understand, mud is a problem because mud has sun. How can, if I put mud in your eye, it needs time to get those. <laughs> so he put the opposite <laughs> in the person's eyes. <laughs> oh, the power of our God. How great is our God. Hallelujah. If a modern preacher Speed in somebody's tongue. CNN. It will be proclaiming Fox News. A, a which news in Africa is the most popular news? Equinox. <laughs> African numero <laughs> They will hear it. Have you heard that preacher called Bishop Jack Mbang? <laughs> he went to a church somewhere and he spit in somebody's tongue. Can you imagine what just happened? He transferred his spit to somebody's tongue. But Jesus healed the person by doing that. Why was Jesus doing this? To reveal to you, don't make a doctrine on a method. There are many different ways. Jesus healed in different ways in scripture. Sometimes he will not even touch the people. He will just say it. Amen. He will just say, go your child is healed. And when the man got there, the child was healed. Hallelujah. He did not say this one. I have to go and reveal that the method of healing is by touch. I need to go and touch. 
No, he just spoke. Make no doctrine on methods. Use it as the spirit leads. Amen? Use it as the spirit leads. The spirit may lead you to speak. The spirit may lead you to touch. The spirit may lead you to even speak. The things that I do, you don't want to quote that scripture. <laughs> the things that I do, you will do also and greater things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I heard of a case of a man who was brushing his teeth, you know, and he had his water, had water cup, cup of water. A lame man came at the hotel, knocked at the door. He was, he'd been praying for people and, and he said, please heal me. The Lord told him, throw the water you have on him. <laughs> he poured that water on him. The man got up walking. But don't go and make a doctrine. The church of throwing water. <laughs> we throw water and people get healed. No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit spoke. Throw the water. Don't go and get all your water now. <laughs> Dr. Ray, I want to show you something here. <laughs> the wife is already looking. Don't pour that water on my husband. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So don't make a doctrine on God's method because they change. The Holy Spirit does what he wants. And when he calls a man, he reveals to that man the way to release his power. I attended a meeting by Omar Epai. Some of you have heard of him? Omar Epai is a Nigerian minister that God used a lot in healing and the release of power. I attended one of the meetings. I was right in the front seat. I saw a way. The man doesn't touch people. He stands on the stage and said, and say, Spirit of God, move in Jesus' name. People were being healed all over the hall. That's how he prays. That's how God used him to release power. God gives different ways to release his power. If you were waiting for a man power to touch you, he doesn't. He just prays like that. People get here. There were demons manifesting all over the place near me. There was a guy they started manifesting, vomiting. The, the demons began to come out when the spirit was moving in the hall. Amen. I just heard of this man, of, the, uh, the, the, uh, of what is happening in Zambia. Miracles that are happening using Dr. Miles because people cross the bloodline. Lame walking. People just cross the bloodline and they get miracles began happening. You know, Sid Rod said something. He said, they have had other ministers, many ministers, including Benny Hinn in Sid Rod. He said, but they have had more miracles when Dr. Miles came there than any other minister. Because it seems as though when you just pray for the sick, people can, but when you give people something to do, they tend to believe it more. Simple instruction. Because Sid Roth said, Dr. Mike just said, cross the bloodline. And as people cross, right there, people were being healed. Hundreds of them got healed. Amen. You must know God loves to heal his people that he doesn't care which method. He wants to heal. Amen. He wants to set people free. Amen. Amen. Don't make a doctrine on methods. Just because God used different methods. He may tell you, he like told the, the, the prophet told uh, this guy, go to the water. Don't start a, a, a water ministry. <laughs> God uses different methods to heal. And he uses different ways. And some of the ways, Dr. Mice told me, some of the ways that God has been healing now is through speaking to the earth. Amen? Amen. He heals that way. Many, people have, many of you have received miracles through speaking to the earth, isn't it? This church, the, minister, that the speaking to the earth message has ministered to more people in this church. Some of you have shared your miracles with me. I don't want to say it. Yeah. Hallelujah. A lot of miracles. But I'm saying, don't see, don't just believe that all miracles must come by speaking to the earth. Are you getting it? That's where the problem is. Don't just believe that all miracles must come by crossing the bloodline. That's one of the methods. Some you need to touch the person. Some you need to speak to the sickness. Some you need to just read the word. There are cases where people just read the word consistently and God heals them. There's power in the word of God. Amen. Tell your neighbor, make no doctrine on methods. The Holy Spirit owns the methods. 
Shout it, the Holy Spirit owns the method. Hallelujah. Shout it, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say the Holy Spirit owns the method. Amen. Oh, if you don't like my message, I like it myself. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. And don't be offended with the method. If I tell you, go and run. And you'll be healed. Don't say, where did it ever happen in the Bible? The Holy Spirit has his ways. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know of a case of a man of God or a head of a case where the man brought somebody on the stage and said, jump down, you'll be healed. Don't say, where is the jumping healing coming from now? <laughs> what happened? He jumped from the stage and he got healed. The methods are controlled by the Holy Spirit. With simple instruction, God can heal you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I love you. I sense faith in this place. I sense faith in this house. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be. And the Lord will direct you through the word of knowledge and through the word of wisdom on various methods. That's why you must spend time praying in the Holy Spirit and spend time in the word. So that you can speak God's method when you are directed by the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes they look strange. Amen? The Lord wanted to heal somebody with the eye. And the Lord told the person, remove the eyeglasses. The person said, if I remove it, I can't see. <laughs> and he stood there for healing. They said, remove it. He said, he said if I remove, I can't see. It's okay. Just obey. <laughs> Finally, they convinced her to remove those eyes. Some people are opinionated. When she removed the eyeglasses, the man laid hands on her. And she began seeing far better than her eyeglasses. She put the eyeglasses and she was struggling. She put it away. It was just a simple method. Remove the eyeglasses. <laughs> are you getting it? Child of God, be malleable in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Say, I will be malleable in the hands of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit have not told you to remove your eyeglasses, don't remove it. Don't go and fall on the road. But there comes a time the Holy Spirit tells you, remove it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Shout, I, I shall be led by the Spirit. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I have a particular way to end this message, but I will stop here. I, 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 may God help me to, because the part I want to end is on what God has done in us. The Lord, the Spirit of God. Where the Spirit is, there is liberty. The Spirit of God being in you is your secret to healing. Say with me, the Spirit of God. Will you give me two minutes to give the introduction? Yes. You are ready? Yes. For two minutes? Yes. You ignore the time? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen? Let's go to Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Romans 8. Let's read aloud. But, let's read aloud. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will raise Christ from the dead, will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. This gives the right for healing for every believer filled with the Holy Spirit. As long as the spirit of God is inside of you, you are a candidate for healing. No, no, no. You are not shouting enough. <laughs> you are a candidate for healing. As long as you have the spirit, you are a candidate for healing. And God will use it to heal other police people. I think God wanted you to hear this message. Don't just go and arrest them. Heal them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say with me, I will heal the sick. 
Say the spirit of God is in me. The spirit of God is in me. Shout it, the spirit of God is in me. Hallelujah. That spirit is a healing Holy Spirit. So if you have the spirit of God, you have healing alive inside of you. And the one who has the spirit of God has the life of God inside of him. So therefore, that life of God that is inside of you is there to renew you. So that when you are 70, you look like 50. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I want you to begin to speak to your body. I mean to your what they call mortal body. And speak to your body. Say in the name of Jesus body. You must listen to the spirit that is inside of me. When the spirit is there. It is there to quicken you. Say with me quicken. Say quicken. Quicken. Because this is what the Bible says. He will raise Christ from the dead. Will also do what? Give life. Say with me, give life. Yes. Say give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Listen carefully. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus was the greatest miracle. It took more power to raise Christ from the dead than to create the world. Because all of hell wanted it to end in the grave. The battle of death, the highest battle on earth is life and death. That is the greatest battle because once you, once you die, it has ended. You get what I'm saying? It's the highest battle. It's not a battle for this disease because you can get well. The greatest battle is death and life. And that is the battle that Jesus has won. Hallelujah. On that day, what happened? All of hell, the hosts of heaven, including Lucifer himself, did everything for Christ not to rise. But something happened. On the, that day, the stones gave way. The, the soldiers who were around the grave gave way. And something happened. The Lord Jesus arose from the grave. Hallelujah. God raised him from the dead. The mighty power of God was manifested. And the Lord is saying, this power that all of hell could not stand abide in you. You carry the resurrection power inside of you. You are not a normal human being. You are a walking power of God inside of you. Your mortal body has been quickened and life has been released inside of you. You are a walking giant of the faith. You are a walking warrior because life is inside of you. Do you need a baby? You have life inside of you to produce that baby. Shout a shout of victory. Cynthia, please come. He will raise Christ from the dead. Because that resurrection power was the mightiest power of God. You are so special that God gave you his mightiest power. <laughs> I'm telling you, you are the devil's greatest nightmares. What is inside of you? Is there to move mountains? Hallelujah. Say with me, I will move mountains. Say, I am a mountain mover. In Jesus' name. Shout it, I'm a mountain mover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm giving you an introduction to teaching on the on, on healing the sick. One of the aspects is simply. I wish that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. Amen. So God is saying, your prosperity should be as your soul. Your soul, where Jesus is, has no disease. God is saying, your body must be the same. Your body must be the same. It's not just that you get healed. You be in health. You don't wait to be healed. You live in health. 
Hallelujah. Say with me, I live in health. I will live in health. Say, I live in health all the days of my life in the name of Jesus. If you are a Christian, that is your portion. Raise your hands and worship the Lord. Everybody stand, stand up and just worship God and just give him the glory. I am the Lord that he let thee. I am the Lord that he let thee. We worship you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you for the spirit of God that is inside of each one of us here. We thank you that the spirit has quickened our mortal bodies. We worship you, Lord, that there is no disease that the spirit cannot heal. There is no disease is that the spirit of God cannot heal we carry the glory of God we carry healing inside of us the Holy Spirit the healer the one who raised Jesus from the dead that power is alive inside of us Spirit of God we worship you we thank you if you can raise Jesus from the dead what is what is diabetes what is cancer what is high blood pressure if you can raise Jesus from the dead father we worship you we honor you we glorify glorify you you have revealed to us the secret to your power there is nothing that can stop us there is nothing that can stop the people of god there is no sickness that can stop us lord we will be in health in the name of the lord jesus christ if you want to receive healing raise your hands now and just get the healing say lord jesus i receive healing right now say lord i thank you for the holy spirit who is inside of me holy spirit i worship you i bless your name the power that raised jesus from the dead is inside of me and your word says you give life to my mortal body therefore I receive and activate the life of God in me. The life of God has no death, has no disease. Therefore, in Jesus' name, I speak to my body. Receive the life of the living God. In Jesus' name, every disease, I command you out. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing right now to my body. And I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. Now raise your hands and worship the Lord. Begin to bless his name. Thank you, Jesus, for healing each one year. Thank you for healing each one year, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor, great God. The Lord has healed you. And you will begin to see that every symptom has disappeared. The Lord has healed you. The Lord has healed you. We give you glory, Lord, that the environment of healing is right here. And your people are being healed. We worship you, Lord. We honor you, great God. And finally, he says, I want you to be in health, even as you are so prospered. Now, tell the Lord, I choose to be in health. Let's pray together. Raise your hands and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I believe your word. You said in your word that you wish above all things that I prosper and be in health. Therefore, in Jesus' name, I accept to prosper. I will prosper financially. I will prosper socially. I will prosper in my family. I will prosper in every area of my life. And Lord, I accept to be in health and to live healthy all the days of my life. I receive the grace to be in health, to walk in perfect health. I refuse diseases. My body shall enjoy the life of the spirit and I will be in health all the days of my life. My body is the disease-free zone. 
my body is cancer free zone is diabetic free zone is high blood pressure free zone is heart attack free zone and every other disease my body will be in health according to the will of God as my soul prosper in the name of Jesus I proclaim in the rest of my life I will be in health I will enjoy good health I will live in good health all the days of my life in Jesus name I shout a shout of victory hallelujah to the great God we give you the glory Lord we give you the glory in Jesus name